used to be chickens. Wait, I can't tell if you're pranking me right now. I'm There's not, llamas I'm next to me. campus? Yeah. So there was like a hip hypnotizing show. What? And like this hypnotizing guy, I don't know what you'd call him. <laughs> this mid I'm gonna call him a magician. If not, go to fucking Brantford. <laughs> I used to like live in the library last year. Welcome back to the Canadian Undergraduate Experience Podcast, where I will be chatting with current university students about their admissions process, student life, academics, and more. Before we jump right into today's call, I want to quickly mention that all guests on the show can speak only from their own experience and can't speak for other people in their programs or at their schools. Obviously, you should never make any important decisions based solely off of these episodes or any one source, and you should always make sure to do your own research. With that out of the way, today's guest is Sarah Popovich. Sarah goes to Wilfrid Laurier University in Waterloo, Ontario, and is studying kinesiology. Let's give her a call. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me. So what school do you go to? I go to Sir Wilfrid Laurier University. Do people call it WLU or Laurier? Because those are like Um, nicknames I've heard. It's more Laurier, if anything. Okay, yeah, because I was confused. One time I saw it, like, referred to as WLU, and I was like, what is that? I mean, like, the abbreviation. That would be, like, the abbreviation. Yeah. Um, but, like... Which town is Laurier in? Okay, there's one campus in Brantford, which is dog pit. Do not go to fucking Brantford. <laughs> and then there's one in Waterloo, which is just superior. Okay, so there's two campuses. Are Brantford and Waterloo close together? Brantford's, like, closer to Toronto, but then Waterloo is, like, only an hour away-ish from Toronto. So people, like, only are on one campus? It's not like you go back and forth or anything? Yeah. There's just, like, like, my program is only at Waterloo, and there's some programs only at Brantford, I think. So what kind of programs are at Waterloo? Well, honestly, I have no idea what the fucking difference is between the two. All I know is kin isn't offered in Brantford, basically. Okay, so you're in kin. I'm in kinesiology. <laughs> So, how many people about do you think are in your program? Um, like, in my year? Yeah. I'd say it's 250-ish. Oh, that's a lot. Probably. And then, like, throughout, like, the whole school, probably, like, like, seven, eight hundred, a thousand. My okay. year's, like, a little bit bigger, apparently, than previous years, but... Just more applicants, maybe? It's just maybe? becoming more popular, I guess. Yeah, I know? guess. Is it... How do you find it? Just, like, how is the program? Is it? Did it meet all your wildest dreams? <laughs> um, I didn't really have any dreams <laughs> going into fucking Laurier, but, uh, like, it's good. It's, like, what I would expect university to be. Like, some courses are, like, kind of light. The other, one, other ones are, like, fucking impossible. Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> Swearing already. I'm just so upset. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, okay. Um, did you know straight away from high school that you were going into kin? Well, that was kind of the only thing I was interested in studying, like, after. Like, I've always, like, been kind of, like, an athletic person. And then I took, like, the kin course in high school. Like, intro to fucking health science or whatever it is. And I was like, this is dope. I guess I can study this. Because I had no idea what I actually wanted to do. And- so I was just, like, trying to pick something that I like to study. Yeah, and when you applied to Laurier, do you apply directly to, like, a major in kinesiology? Yeah. And, like, what did you have to do for the application? Was it just grades-based? Um, I think I had to answer, like, a few, like, pretty brief questions, like, about myself. Like, I feel like most applications do that. It's like, tell us about yourself. I don't really remember. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> do you remember if you applied to any other schools for kin? Yeah, I did. Um, what they are is a good question. <laughs> I know I applied to Carlton Health Science as, like, a very, like, backup. And then Ottawa U for Human Kinetics, which is, like, basically fancier kin. Okay. It's just, like, more sciences. Okay. Instead of, like, less application. And, like, Lori is, like, a good combination of both, I would say. Um, I know Guelph Humber, like, the university and college, like, mix. Yeah, yeah. Like, close to Toronto. Like, I was, like close to going there because it gives you like a university degree in kinesiology and then like another like something in like sports performance or something oh that's a good deal or something for the college degree 
Yeah. So you get like a double certification or whatever the fuck. So why'd you yeah. pick Laurier over that? Um, great question. Uh, it kind of came down, like, I decided to, like, go and visit before I, like, made my decision because that's what you're supposed to do. So I went, like, a few days before the application was due because I'm lazy. And I saw, like, the campus had, like, the tour, you know. But I really like the small vibe it has. Like, it's a very, very small campus. Um, and there's, like, it's just very homey. Like, the buildings aren't, like, connected, but, like, the way it's laid out is, like, very, like, close-knit. And then there's, like, lots of, like, trees and green space nearby. Like, Waterloo's not the worst town ever. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you really like the campus when you toured. Do you still feel that way after being there for a while? Yeah, I haven't been on campus this year. But much, last year? But I've, like, driven by it and been like, oh, I miss, I miss being there. Because I used to, like, live in the library last year. Yeah. Do they have the library's nice. Do they have only one library? Yeah, but it's like seven stories. Oh wow. And is there like yeah. different spots? Like some are quiet and some are yeah. loud and stuff? There's like a crazy amount of study spots like around campus. Like some of them I only discovered like towards the end of last year. <laughs> Just because there's so many everywhere. But like you have your like quiet ones, you have your like medium and like each floor of the library goes up and, like, how serious you should be in, like, by being quiet. Like, the seventh floor, you have to be the quietest. Like, you don't make noise at all. That's where, like, the fourth-year students go. And, <laughs> and then, then, like, floor, like, one and two are, like, the dumbest first years. Oh, no. It's just yeah. for the people who aren't trying hard yet. Yeah, pretty much. It makes sense. So do you think first-year classes were easier than now? Yes, for sure. They were easing you in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's such a wide range covered in like for well for my program anyways because I took like biology courses obviously just like general biology uh general psychology um like a history into kinesiology course Hmm. and then just some like introductory like motor control and like intro into like what you're going to be studying like the previous years and then like this year it's more like insane anatomy physiology um is that what it's called? Insane anatomy? It should be called it. <laughs> Yo, that's impossible. They expect you to memorize the whole textbook. Oh, yeah? So do you yeah. think in your program, is that, like, the important thing to do well, is to just be able to memorize a lot of stuff? Or is it, like, understanding? Um, the way, like, a lot of, like, tests are done, they're mostly, like, multiple choice or, like, some short answer and stuff like that. So, like, it's definitely, like, a lot of retention. You just have to, like, spit out information. Yeah. Yeah. And do you find, are most of the evaluations, like, tests? Or is there a lot of, like, lab-type stuff? Um, it depends on the course, obviously. Uh, a lot of, like, the kin-specific courses have, like, a lab component that's worth, like, 35 or, like, 40% of the grade. Um, and that has, like, either, like, weekly assignments or, like, lab reports, stuff like that like, very chill, like, you can easily, like, do well in the lab, and then other courses, it's, like, there's, like, a lab midterm, so, like, for my physiology course right now, I think there's five midterms for the class, because there's three regular midterms, and then two for the lab. There's a lot of, like, not so many, like, written assignments as there are midterms, because, like, for example, this term, I have 13 midterms. Oh my gosh. They started beginning of February, and they end like right before exam season in April so I'm just like non-stop doing tests <laughs> oh no wait how many <laughs> classes is that to get 13 midterms five wow so some classes have more than two yep that's wild one of mine has three the other one has five Wh- five that's, that's right not now, midterms yeah, then ridiculous. that's just a test hmm? if, if you have five that's just a test that's not a midterm there's no way no, I swear, f- physiology, because there's two, the lab content is slightly different than what they teach in class, so there's differences, so they're different tests, so yeah. No, know. that's kind of ridiculous, and for the labs, um, what kind of stuff do you actually do? <laughs> okay, um, it depends on the class, I haven't had like an in-person lab since first year, Aww. which is unfortunate because a physiology or anatomy lab would be really great like yeah. super hands-on they have like cadavers and stuff 
so like a cadaver is like an actual like person but like made of plastic kind of thing <laughs> you got me scared <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah but uh and they have like a bunch of like different like pressure plates and stuff like that that people would play with in like biomechanics and stuff like that but we don't have that this year unfortunately but uh like in first year there are more like tutorials so like you go and one is like trying to teach people how to coach like younger students so it'd be like more centered around like the younger athlete and like kind of games you could do and it builds your repertoire of like how you can instruct them so like kind of more of like a teaching course and that tutorial is more just like a gym gym class oh that's fun (laughs) which is nice you just get to go to like the big stadium and play in the gym and then there are other labs nothing is like super brutal in first year it's more just like applying what you've learned in class so is a lot of it done in groups then? Yeah, a lot of the labs, you'll be in like a group of like three or like a group of four. And like you kind of like work through the session. If there's any like assignments, there might be one or two a year that are in like a group. But otherwise, it's mostly individual stuff. Okay. And how many people would you say are in like one first year lab or one first year class? Because you said you took like intro bio and intro psych. Those are normally really big. Yeah, the general like intro bio is like you'll be in like one of the biggest lecture halls we have not one of the those are reserved for the business kids but like <laughs> in the science buildings you'll be in like the bigger auditorium areas that would have like probably 300 to 400 students and then kin specific classes you'd definitely be in like a smaller classroom style environment with like probably up most of 75 to like 30 and then for labs for kin you'd be having probably about 20 to 25 okay yeah that's like yeah. pretty small i feel like you could get to know the others for who, sure who runs the labs is it like tas um it's either ta or there are like actual lab instructors so like ones you'll have in first year you'll continue to have like one guy i had for a certain lab he's doing my biomech tutorials now so like it's often like the same people and then you really get to be familiar with them which is cool is that a good thing (laughs) are the tas well if you're a good student it's a good thing yeah you can really like understand like teachers and how they teach the kinds of tests they have because you'll often have them a couple times yeah have you found that the professors and the lab people are like nice people and want to see you succeed yeah definitely There are a few teachers you could pick out and be like, oh, I definitely am going to look out to, like, not register for their course again. Which is honestly a good thing to know, though. Like, if you have a shitty prof in first year, you can avoid them the rest of the years. So. But then if you have a good one, then you can be like, yeah, I'm going to look for her class. Yeah. How much choice do you have to take, like, on which classes you take so that you can choose Um, to take those profs? Like, there are, like, set courses for sure. Especially for first and second year. But you, you, of course, have, like, a couple of electives. So you, you get the, that freedom. But, uh, like, there are, like, multiple sections for courses. So, like, you could potentially have a different prof. Or you could potentially have a different tutorial instructor kind of thing. And as electives, what did you take? Oh, um, first year, I took design thinking. Like, a, a UX course. Ooh. Uh, it was kind of a bad experience for me because I was in a group that didn't want to talk at all, so I had to do all the presenting, and that's <laughs> that brutal for me, just as who I am. And it was with a bunch of, like, CS kids, so it was very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then I took philosophy in the winter, and it was uh, kind of a mistake because it's kind of a hard course. <laughs> yeah, no, I think philosophy yeah. has a rep of being easy, and it's really not. Yeah, and then now all my electives are taken up by biology and psychology because that's where I'm trying to minor. Which one of those? Double minor. Both? Oh, yikes. That's funny because I feel like those are two aspects of kin. (laughs) So you're just doing more kin. (laughs) And, like, there are a bunch of courses you can select for your minor. So, like, not so much for bio because I'm just trying to, like, get it over with. I only need one more because there's so many like required kin course or bio courses that you take so it kind of just goes towards it they count for both so i'm just like trying to get that out of the way but psychology you need like a lot more so like you can kind of pick courses 
that you think will apply to your degree. Like last term I had uh, perception, introduction to perception, and then now I'm taking introduction to personality. Do you like those? Um, they're, they're really not so bad. Like, because, <laughs> like, kinesiology is like a science degree. Like, you have a pretty heavy background by the time you're in second year of, like, how the body works. And, like, those two courses are kind of, like, centered around that. So it's really not so difficult. But a lot of the psych students struggle with, like, perception, for example. Yeah. Well, you talked a little bit about how there was all these psych kids, all these CS kids and whatever. But I also know that Laurier is, like, big for business. On campus, do you find that there's, like, an imbalance of, like, a lot more of some types of major than others? Yeah, you can definitely tell who's in what program by how they walk around campus. What do you mean? (laughs) Okay, I I don't know how to explain this, but, like, the stereotypes for each program are, like, very, like, clear-cut. Like, I physically look like a kin student, and, like, you could spot that if I was just walking on campus, you'd be like, oh, yeah. They're definitely going to, like, a kin course right now. The business students, they dress more, like, fancy. They have their own fancy building. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> because you look Everyone athletic? Kind of fits their little, little stereotype for their program. Do you think it's kind of, like, culty? Like, is everyone, like, very proud of the one that they're in? Um, everyone thinks they're better than everyone else. But it's not <laughs> like you're being like, oh, business is better. It's just, like, I think everyone gets along really well. And, like, you take general classes, like psychology, you could have a mix of different students in there. Yeah. So, like, you can easily meet people in different programs. Are most of your friends from other programs or from your program? Um, I'd say most people are from, like, my program just because I would see them the most, especially being, like, a small program. I have a bunch of classes with the same people. But I definitely have, like, a handful of, like, good friends that are, like, in different programs. Yeah. So in Kin, do you guys have like an option to do co-op or like study abroad or research or anything like that? Um, I know there is co-op, but you have to, okay, for co-op is very like unfair for students that aren't in like business. Why? So like you have to apply and the way I understand this might be wrong, but you have to like apply through it and then you either get accepted or declined based on your grades and based on, like, an initial interview. Okay. And then also what program you're in. So they only take a certain amount of people from each program. But, like, business has a lot of st- spots. So you can't be, like, guaranteed it when you come in or anything? You no, just hope for the best not. when you're there? <laughs> yeah. But also, I've heard it's, like, not the best co-op program out there. If you want a good pro- program for that, i definitely recommend, like, Waterloo university which is basically a kilometer away from laureate yeah is there high tensions between those schools i feel like that's like kind of either a joke or like a serious like feud between the two yeah a little bit of both (laughs) oh yeah do people ever take classes on both or like is there like any kind of combined efforts (laughs) like yeah um because laureate is pretty small they a lot of like double degree students like business and like math I know they take a lot of math courses at Waterloo. Oh, yeah, that's good. Or, like, the computer science students at Lori will take a bunch of courses at Waterloo. Just because they have, like, a way bigger campus and offer a lot more. Did you consider Waterloo at all? Um, I... Okay, um, I was kind of stupid when I was applying. I didn't really know where to apply, but they have a kid program. But they also required courses that I did not want to take in high school, like... Uh, calculus and vectors I was like (laughs) hell no I am done with math okay so there's different requirements and like each kin program I find focuses on different things yeah so So, what would you say the focus of the Laurier one is then the Laurier one I think it's very practical like they definitely teach you a bunch of like theoretical stuff but then you have a bunch of opportunities to apply it And it definitely sets you up, you're definitely not going to know anything I'm talking about, but you can become, like, a registered kinesiologist afterwards. Or, like, set yourself up for, like, different certifications. And I think Laurie does that really well. So you are eligible, though, to, like, become registered when you graduate? So that's, like, a, there's, like, a, a college for, like, something something kinesiology and 
and he become a registered kinesiologist. Like, it's like a big exam. And, like, a lot of people, like, straight out of kinesiology undergrad will do that and become, like, an arkin. <laughs> it's kind of stupid. What does that mean? But then you can get, like, jobs in a more clinical setting without doing more school. Okay. Is that what you want to do? Um, that's definitely one step I was thinking about. And then just kind of gathering, get it, landing a job and then gathering some other certifications. Maybe, like, personal training. Um, and then maybe even go back to school, do a graduate degree, just to, like, set myself up for, like, even better jobs. Yeah. But we'll see. Who knows? Yeah. Do you find that, like, everyone in your program has, like, similar type of athletic interests? Um, I would say most people in my program definitely come from a more athletic background, but not everyone is, like, that hardcore varsity athlete. There are definitely, like, you can see people who, like, are on, like, the lacrosse team or, like, the baseball team or the hockey team. And, like, you can pick them out. But, like, there are a lot of people that will be in, like, just clubs and stuff. And, I don't know. Like, I'd say there's, like, a stereotype, but then there's definitely people that, like, don't have a huge sports-heavy background. And then maybe this is, this degree is to lean them into, like, med school or something. Yeah, it could be. Um, have you joined any sports or clubs? Um, I'm on the women's flag football team, so. Did you know you were doing that in high school? I had no idea that even existed. <laughs> um, and then one day I stumbled upon the, like, club fair that was, like, because my res was, like, straight across from, like, one of the practice fields. And I could, like, look out and see, like, people practicing. And then there was, like, this big, like, event set up. So I was, like, okay, I'm going to go walk around on board. And then I, like, stumbled upon their little tent being, like, yo, join football. And I was, like, I've never played football. And my <laughs> sport was, like, soccer. And I never played football throughout all the sports I played in high school. But I was, like, oh, okay, I'll put my name on the list. We'll see. So then... <laughs> They sent out, like, some information and, like, tryouts. There were, like, 80 people that showed up to try out, and I was like, oh, f- I'm definitely getting cut. Yeah. What the hell? But then, I don't really know. I kind of just made the team. <laughs> Somehow you <laughs> made was, it anyway. I thought for sure I was going to get cut, because there were, like, you could see who was on the team previously, like, they were better. like, a big skill level. Yeah. But then I'm just, like, naturally kind of transferred some skills and then somehow made the cut, but yeah. How many people are on the team? Uh, under 40. Oh, wow. 40-ish, yeah. And what have you guys gotten to do? I guess probably not very much this year, but last year. Yeah, nothing this year, but last year, like, a bunch of practices. Oh, and it runs in the winter. Heads up to anyone. If you don't want to play outside in the winter, definitely do not do this. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yeah, practices outside at like in the evenings in the cold in the snow when the field's covered with like ice whatever we're out there you're making it sound uh, so great (laughs) (laughs) yeah so that's like like tryouts started in november and then the team was made we were practicing before christmas and then after christmas our first tournament was like end of january and like the league that they're associated with it's just tournaments it's tournaments like against other schools that have the team so like not all schools have this team yet yeah it's just like some so like there was one tournament like at laurier one at waterloo one in toronto one in mcmaster so like you get to travel around and like sometimes you get to stay overnight that's fun yeah have you made good friends on that team too um i tended to dodge the social events that happened with the team because I'm not a party person per se but the average Laurie student definitely is but uh it's definitely like a really good place to meet people yeah because you spend a lot of time with people that aren't necessarily people you'd normally meet like there are a bunch of upper year students on the team just like people in like programs you wouldn't associate yourself with um okay so I wanted to ask you about you were talking about very hard weather for 
football season with like snow and ice and stuff. What is the weather situation in Waterloo? Um, well, being from Ottawa, it's nothing like there. You definitely don't get minus 20 every day in the winter. Like, right now, the climate's, like, minus 8 most days, I'd say. So, like, very, very reasonable. Much Um, milder. But, like, you do get, like, a decent amount of snow. Not, like, Ottawa. Not, like, a crazy amount. But, like, the occasional snow dump. And decent freezing rain. Okay. I'd say, like, typical Ontario. Do you, were people that are on campus, or I guess people that go to the school, um, have you met a lot of international people or people from far away, or are they mostly, like, closer from Ontario type of stuff? Um, I've definitely met, like, a few international people, mostly because they were on, like, my residence floor, so, like, I, but, like, I haven't really been friends with anybody that's international, but, like, there are a decent amount, like, in the business program, stuff like that. Uh, yes. Yeah, so what residence building did you stay in, if you don't mind saying? Um, I stayed in Clara Conrad. It's right next to the, the gym. Okay. Yeah. Um, how many residence options are there? Oh, uh, two, three. There's, like, I want to say three or four, like, off campus. Okay. So it's kind of like a walk to school, but still not very far. Um, and then there's, I don't even know. Should I know this? Like <laughs> you six, can approximate. Like on campus, six. I feel like that's high. One, two. That's fine. Four. Yeah, like six-ish, like on campus residences. Okay, and what like styles of rooms do they offer? Um, I stayed in like a a double dorm, so like I had a roommate like sharing like one room, so like we both slept in the same room type type. Um, and then with like a communal bathroom, but there. Are, uh, single rooms that share a bathroom with someone and then there are apartment style so there's like four or five people but then you also get a kitchen wow and yeah. how does Laurier choose which one you get to be in so you can like if you have friends that you know are like going to the university you can fill out like an application to like be in housing with them um, and then you get to like choose your, like, first, second, and third choice for, like, styles. You don't get to choose the building at all. But, um, and then they used to have it where if you had, like, a 90-plus average from high school, you would get your first choice. But because so many people have, like, insanely high grades now, um, that doesn't happen anymore, and it's all just, like, a lottery system. Yeah. So there's no guarantees, but do people normally get their, one of their top three, you think? Um... I got my second or third. Um, I mean, I feel like like double dorm is like the least wanted, but like people obviously end up in there. Yeah. So like it's hard to say if like people get their like favorite, but honestly, it's like whatever you get. Like I was very concerned about sharing a room with someone, but I find it like you get along. Like I only I knew like one like two girls that didn't get along in their room but that was like the only those were the only people that I knew that's good how did they how did they choose roommates for you do you fill out a form about yourself or something yeah there are like questions about like what time do you go to bed what time do you wake up what kind of activities do you like to do in your room um just so they can get people with like similar interests and like similar sleep schedules because that's a big thing yeah What's one thing that you would recommend that people bring to residence? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, for my building in particular, like you're not allowed to have bring your own fridge. You have to rent it through a company that the school's associated with. Um, I would say you probably don't need the fridge. I barely used mine. Oh yeah. But uh, one thing to bring. Oh, if you're not in an AC like air conditioned unit definitely bring a fan because it is hot in the fall i'm sure (laughs) i feel like people suggest fans either way like so you can drown out the snoring of your roommate yeah that too if that's an issue (laughs) white noise is probably your best option um but you were talking about the fridge did you not use it because you use the dining halls a lot um 
Yeah, well, I didn't have, like, a... There was, like, a weird communal kitchen, like, on our floor, but it only had, like, a stove and, like, was kind of dog shit. So we didn't... I didn't use it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and, like, I had a meal plan. There are, like, different options for meal plans that I can go into if you want. Sure. But, uh, yeah, I had a meal plan, so I used that. Do you have cook. to? Do you have to have a meal plan if you stay in residence? So you have, yeah. Um, for the apartment style, I don't think it's required because you have a kitchen that you can cook with. So there's like options to like have like limited days, so you don't have to cook all the time. Um, and then there are two like main meal plans: is like a five day plan and a seven day plan. Because a lot of people travel like home for the weekend hmm. if they live in the area. Um, but I had this seven days, so you have, it's like seven day unlimited access. So like any day, like at any time during the week, I could go into the dining hall and like get a snack, eat it and then leave. Um, and like, I could go in and out as much as I wanted. That's and, like, awesome. I could eat as much as I wanted hypothetically. <laughs> it's just like a sign in, sign out type thing. They swipe your card and then you go in. Wow. And can you bring, like, guests or anything? Obviously not during COVID, but... Um, so the dining hall is, like, really stingy. They, like, don't want you, like, sneaking food out or anything like that. But you do have ten... Depending on the plan you have, you have either, like, seven or ten, like, guest passes. So they swipe your card and then it... You say, oh, I have a guest with me. And then they, like, punch it in and then it takes away a pass. But that's awesome, the unlimited thing. I feel like yeah. some schools, like have declining balance type ones i feel like that's a lot more stressful yeah to keep track especially for like if you're like a student athlete or like semi-athlete i call myself like a a semi-student athlete because i was like going to the gym every day like practicing and stuff like that but you don't get the recognition for it so like i could eat (laughs) like as much as i needed to without worrying about it right and were you happy eating as much as you needed to was it good food (laughs) Um, so there's always, like, a, a salad bar, which is, like, really good, especially if, like, you're kind of, like, not sure what you want, and there was always, like, two stations at, like, main meals that had, like, kind of, like, cultured food, so, like, it would be, like, either, like, Mexican or, like, Chinese or, like, Indian, I don't know, stuff like that, like, and it would, like, rotate, so, like, you weren't ever sure what was going to be there for dinner. Then there was always pizza, like fresh like pizza that made there make it like right in front of you in the oven over there. You're like, oh, cheese pizza's coming out in five minutes. Might as well wait. Um, and then there's a pasta station, which Ooh. is pretty decent. Love the pasta station. <laughs> yeah, so there's always like variety. Was there like kind of, or I don't know if you knew this, but is there food accommodations for like halal or like vegan diets? Um, I think there's always something I don't know if it's any good because I never paid attention to it but I I think there's always some sort of option for both of those yeah um what about oh my gosh what was I gonna say oh yeah is there only one dining hall yeah we're a small campus so there's only like one like residence dining hall because no one like I said like you're only allowed to be in residence first year Mm -hmm. also okay um so, like, upper year students wouldn't really get a meal plan. So, there's only, like, one dining hall is mostly first years. And then there's, like, a food court and, like, other, like, a Starbucks and, like, Tim's and stuff like that on campus. Um, and those would be, like, other students or even, like, like apartment-style students, stuff like that, who, like, wouldn't, like, exclusively go to the dining hall. Yeah, if you had meal plan left at the end of last year, does it roll over till this year? Um, so the meal plan is, like, for the year, but because of, like, COVID, for me, like, there's this thing called, like, flex dollars, and so, like, depending on what kind of meal plan you get, you get a certain amount of flex dollars per term, and they transfer, so, like, I'll have mine next year, um, and it's kind of basically like a prepaid visa, that's how I would describe it, and you can use it in any place, like, on campus that sells food. So, like, I could use it in the food court to buy a coffee, or I could use it at Tim's or Starbucks or Subway for lunch. So that's, like, a really nice option, especially if you, like, don't want to eat in the dining hall because you're, like, you have to eat in there and then you leave. Um, 
for first year students that's like really handy and then upper year students if you save it then you have like you don't have to make your lunch every single day you go to school yeah so nice where do upper year students normally live after residence um waterloo is basically a town of student housing so there's like a bunch of different like choices you could look for probably a year and not go through every building oh yeah so yeah how do you find them are they all posted somewhere um you could easily like go for a walk and be like oh this building's nice and then like just kind (laughs) of look up the company like take note of like accommodate you or like and kitchener for rent or like stuff like that like it's just like the stupid advertising that's what i did i walked around and i looked at the buildings and how far do you live now i live like walking distance uh five minutes from campus probably that's nice yeah like there's so many like really close options so yeah switching subjects (laughs) um Mm -hmm. did you guys have some kind of like frosh or like beginning of the year events in residence or for first years there's orientation week which i was not a very big fan of myself i was hoping it would be something organized by like each like faculty department or like i'd start to meet like students like in my my in my major before like starting classes yeah but it's not organized like that at all so it's basically a thing for like your residents so like each residence is like competing against each other in like different games and stuff so like it's cool because you get to meet people on your floor but also i was like barely at residence because i studied so much elsewhere so i didn't really like become friends with anyone on my floor except for my roommate obviously (laughs) so i thought it would have been better if it was organized like by department or like faculty because then that would have been better to meet people did you at least do cool activities yeah, there were, like, some cool ones. There was, like, a hip- hypnotizing show. What? <laughs> and, like, this hypnotizing guy. I don't know what you'd call him. <laughs> this mag- I'm going to call him a magician. He would, like, call on, like, ten students, and they'd, like, sit on stage. And I don't know if it was, like, real or not. Like, what the hell? I was very skeptical. But <laughs> there was, like, a whole show. It was kind of cool. Yeah, and then there was, fun. like, headphone disco, which is, like, a lot of universities did. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. It was funny, like, taking off the headphones and just watching everybody dance. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I Those really were, like, the two main events, but there's definitely, like, like a big part of it was, like, cheer. Like, uh, I don't know, what the hell did they call it? Like, at the end of the week, it was, like, a cheer off. So, like, each residence had, like, different colors. So there were, like, four main colors. Like, I was red, there was, like, yellow, green, blue. And each residence, like, obviously some people, like, shared the same thing, even if you weren't in the same residence. But then you'd get together at the end and you'd learn, like, the same cheers and stuff. And there'd be, like, a dance-off, like, a cheer-off, like, different that you'd do in, like, the stands. And some people would go on, like, the gym floor. And then, like, you would try to win. So it was, like, a competition thing. And, like, everything in the week was leading into, like, the finale, like, cheer show. I don't know. Does it... It was interesting. Does it give you guys a lot of, like, school spirit? For me, not really. But, like, I think everyone can kind of, like, get behind, like, like, hypothetically, like, what you're doing. It's like, okay, like, they're trying to make you, like, make friends and, like, be like, oh, Lori is amazing. And, like... It's kind of, like, a good experience, but, like, I'd say it's definitely, like, a 50-50 split between, like, spirit and, like, no spirit at all. Yeah. (laughs) Um, do you know any stereotypes of Laurier students? Um, well, for the whole school, it would kind of just be, like, uh, party kids. Do you think that's true? Hmm? Do you think that's true? Um, for the large majority of students, yeah. Do you think there's, like, pressure for people who don't want to do that? Like, maybe you, to, like, get involved with that? Oh, I think there's definitely, like, because it's, like, kind of the atmosphere there, especially the, like, upper year students kind of, like, convey it. And, like, there are a bunch of, like, party houses and, like, the party street is, like, super close to the school. So, like, a lot of people will just, like, automatically see that. Yeah. I think there's definitely, like, a decent amount of pressure. No one's gonna, like, actually pressure you. 
into doing it, but it's more of just like, like I'm part convention. of the university. This is like what it what the typical student does, like kind of thing. Yeah. I won't. I don't know. I wanted to hear about that because I feel like that's like that is one of the stereotypes. Like Queens and Laurier are two of the most I feel yeah. like known for that. But it's interesting. I feel like there's probably are like a bunch of people who aren't necessarily into it. I don't know. Yeah, I've definitely seen more people want to party than not, for sure. But like, you can do whatever you want. Like, no one's gonna force you to do anything. When when people like go out during the week, are they going to like house parties or like frats or like? Do you even have Greek life, like frats and sororities? Um, there are frats and sororities. I have no idea what the hell they are, but they're they're in like houses close by. You can see like the weird like alpha signs on like the front door and stuff. You could, <laughs> you could point them out. Um, like there are those. Um, a lot of them would be like residence parties. A lot of the apartment style buildings have a lot of like parties and stuff like that. More than like the like one to two person like dorms, for sure. Um, and then if you're of age, there are some bars very close by, which are very popular for upper year students. So, can you tell me a little bit more about the city of Waterloo? Um, at first, my impression was that this town kind of sucks. Oh. Because I was coming from a bigger town, Ottawa. Like, big downtown. Like, not like Toronto, obviously, but like a, a pretty close second to Toronto, I'd say. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. <laughs> So I was kind of used to, like, a very different environment. And then this is more, I wouldn't say small town Ontario, but compared to where I was coming from, it definitely felt like it. And I find, like, first-year students, like, tend to stick around campus, like, a lot more. So, like, you kind of feel like, oh, I'm kind of just stuck here. What the hell am I doing? But when I was in first year, I really wanted to kind of, like, get to know the area. So... When it was, like, nice outside, I'd, like, go for a walk. And something really nice about campus is that there's, like, a park. So there's, like, the athletic, like, stadium where, like, homecoming would be held and stuff like that. And then there's Waterloo Park, which is, like, like a 30-second walk from the stadium. Hmm. And the stadium's, like, a three-minute walk from campus. So, like, it's pretty close by. Um... The park has, like, a little cricket field, which is very interesting. (laughs) You can, like, often see, like, like local teams playing cricket on the field. Oh, that's such a confusing game, but it's so cool to watch. I had no idea whether you, I had no idea whether you're talking about the game or the, like, the bug. Yeah, the game, the game, not the, not the uh, insects. Um, and there are a bunch of, like, park benches everywhere. There's, like, a tennis court, uh, a baseball field. Um, there's a little, like, kind of, like, botanical garden area with, like, a bunch of flowers. Super cute. There's, like, a little, I don't know if they call it, like, a river or a lake, but it's kind of more like a puddle. (laughs) Um, (laughs) but, you know, it's nice. It's changed from, like, buildings on campus. And then the best part about the park is that there's, like, uh, like, uh, animals. So there's, like, llamas, donkeys... Um, peacocks, there used to be chickens. Wait, I can't tell if you're pranking me right now. Not, There's I'm llamas next to real. campus? Yeah, I stumbled upon this park with one of my friends, and we were both like, what the hell is this? <laughs> what? Like, what is this place? And we just kept walking, and, like, there's just, like, randomly animals in this one part of the park. Okay. You know, like, if you go to Laurier, definitely check out this park. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's, like, the, the highlight of Waterloo, I'd say. Oh, oh my gosh. god. <laughs> Not the great <laughs> school. Oh yeah. my god. Okay. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Um, the rest of Waterloo, um, after like being in second year, like actually like needing to go grocery shopping and stuff, it's pretty accessible. Um, there's a pretty decent mall, like not far. If you wanted, you could walk there. There's like very good buses though around here. Um, there's also, like, an ion light rail train that's, like, a kilometer away from, like, Gloria campus. Where does it go? So it can go up to the mall, or it can go the other way into Kitchener. So that's an easy way to get downtown into, like, Kitchener and stuff, too. Do you have any type of, like, pass because you're a student? So, like, in non-COVID 
times the school is scanning us this year and isn't letting us like mm-hmm. have a bus pass or anything because they're like you don't need it yeah true <laughs> apparently <laughs> but uh in a regular year yeah your your admissions and stuff like your fees would cover a bus pass and then that would also get you onto the light rail mm-hmm. train and for people that would like be commuting like far like i live in ottawa um a view rail station is like pretty close in kitchener so it's like not as inexpensive uber right away or you could take the ion and it, that, it gets you pretty close do you have any um type of advice for people who are considering laurier or specifically considering kin Ooh, i would definitely tell them if they're looking into kin specifically definitely look into more than a couple schools because every school offers something different and I think that's something that I would say I would regret the most is not looking at different opportunities like because I I didn't really care to where I was applying but I think that's one of my biggest regrets not that I'm not okay with Lori I think it's a great school and I'm pretty happy with the program um advice um I think you should try to find one thing to be involved in. I know, like, it's such a cliche thing to say, especially on my campus. Like, everyone's like, oh, be involved as much as you can and stuff. But I think so many people, like, stop being involved in upper years. But if you can find one thing that you like to do, like one club, one team, anything like that, and you stick with it, and you really enjoy it, I think that's that'll get you more friends like, in the long term, like, close friends outside of your program, too. Yeah. And when you were saying for the, uh, like, look at multiple places, what what should they be looking for? Or, like, what should they pay attention to when they're looking at different kin programs? Yeah, it's really hard to know what you want to do. But I think definitely, like, know what courses you've taken in high school and what programs... Like, if, like, like, let's say you didn't take more math in high school like myself, I would close doors at Waterloo University, as an example. And you have to look in, it's, it's really helpful to look in the, embedded in, like, their websites is, like, the required courses and stuff, and, like, what you'd take in first year, what you'd take in second year, what you'd take in third year, and have a look at the descriptions of each course, and be like, do I want to learn this, or is this too much for me, kind of thing. Because yeah. I remember looking at the Laurier website, and I thought the courses were really cool, and I still think they're good. And I remember looking at Ottawa U, for example, and you had to take a lot of first year, like, general math, general science, and, like, it wasn't, like, as kin-specific until upper years. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I don't know. That's probably my best advice. The only thing I haven't mentioned is, like, the honors program for... Uh, can and then like the concentrations you can do. Oh like yeah, I didn't even know so there was concentrations. Yeah, so what are the concentrations? Let me, wait, let me look. Let me look. Sure. Yeah, so when you apply to the kin program here, it would be the honors kin kinesiology like straight up. So you would get an honors degree, but you have to maintain like a certain average to stay eligible. Oh for okay. Honors, and then is it like a super high this, average? Um. It's not unreasonable. Okay. Like, it's definitely obtainable. Like, if you try and, like, you put in, like, a decent amount of effort, you'll get it. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm decently high above the minimum average for honors, so, like, I would say it's definitely obtainable because I'm not a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, after third year, the kin courses that you have to take are kind of open-ended. So depending on what you want to do, you can choose to be like, oh, I want to do health and rehabilitation as my concentration. So then you take kin courses specific to that in your third and fourth year. So this is available on the undergraduate academic calendar, but uh, there's health and rehabilitation, human movement and performance, physical activity promotion, and teaching, coaching, and management. Um, And you can look at kind of the upper year courses that you could take for each of those, which is kind of like a good look into like different kind of possibilities you could do with a kin degree. And do you know which one you want to do? Yeah, I'm going to do health and rehabilitation because I there are actually really good volunteer opportunities with the university. There's a clinic run by a teacher you are most likely have in second year in the winter. Um, and if you do a few things, 
things to like register to like be able to volunteer within Laurier, outside of Laurier, stuff like that. Anyways, general like fluff introduction, then you can kind of like take up these opportunities. So like in first year in the winter, I worked at the clinic working with like um, dementia patients, which is like really good first hand experience that you wouldn't normally get. So that's like really good. And with the Kim program, you have to have like 96 placement volunteer hours. So it makes you kind of like get that experience. So like you can't just like ride through just like academic. Just doing school. Yeah. That's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sarah. If people have questions about things that we didn't get to cover, is there some way they can contact you? Yeah, for sure. If you have any questions like about Laurier or like Kin specifically, I can answer most of those I'd like to say. Um, you can reach me at my email, uh, P-O-P-O 9790 at mylaurier.ca. Okay. Um, I'll also put that in the description in case people want to look at it there. Um, so that's, that's all. Thank you so much, Sarah. This has been Thanks really helpful. Thanks again to Sarah for coming on the show. And thank you guys so much for listening. Like she said, you can contact her by email or you can contact the show at contact.qpodcast at gmail.com. That's C-O-N-T-A-C-T dot C-U-E P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. You can contact us if you have comments, questions, requests, or if you'd like to come on the show. Um, Finally, subscribe to the podcast if you want to hear upcoming episodes where I'll be talking to students at other universities and in other programs.